Massive changes on all levels, insane adjustments for formerly broken champions, and everything is in absolute shambles. This is a completely new game. And with this, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and we're going to make it easy for you for our tentative tier list for 13.10. Before we unleash the madness, we got to share something really important with you. If you click the link in the description below and become a pro member, you can win more than 11,000 RP. For just $7.99 monthly, you can access a wide variety of educational content and later, I'll tell you a bit more about our master classes. Best of all, you can just be like my dates and just cancel at any time. All you have to do is comment your username in the comment section below. That being said, let's move over to our top lane tier list. Take a good look first and make yourself familiar with our current take on the meta. Across most roles, you'll see a trend that any champion that can utilize Lost Chapter and Futures Market got an insane buff in win rate and power compared to before. But for this lane, we'll start it off with Vayne. Her items just got some interesting changes, and gaining a more diverse damage profile rather than just being true and physical damage makes her a very problematic pick. It will take a bit more time for her to find the new build options, but even crit versions with Essence Reaver are currently emerging that translate into Ginsu's Rage Blade. With Reaver's decently high AD values, Vayne's tumble does a sizable amount of damage, and will surely help you solidify leads in the laning phase. After all, nobody really wants to verse Vayne or a ranged top laner. Similarly in that regard, we have another laner that people dread just going against. Fiora is just one of those champions that benefits from heavy trading and fighting overall. Divine's adjustments are primarily focused on making it less strong versus tanks, but the best options versus fighters. By buffing its Bellblade's base AD ratio, it's giving Fiora even more power against other fighters. In the same sentiment, Jax is getting more powerful than before. As it stands, now we won't really see Divine's craziness go away, as the item is still the premier choice for most inhabitants of the Dragonless lane. Now, let's move over to the jungle role, and here we have T something in our lower elo list before. It's about Belveth, but before we glance at her beauty, we'll first take a look at our full tier list. Belveth is an estate in which different builds are being tested and will take some time to find the go-to build for now. That, however, does not diminish the champion's potential in a solo queue environment as a hard carry. Her main issue, however, at least for the foreseeable future, is keeping up pace with all the other Lost Chapter and Future Market abusers. Evelyn and Nidalee are still absolutely overbearing picks that can take over games in an instant. Nidalee applies this early aggression by being able to clear it in many different ways to influence the game from the early stage. Evelyn, on the other hand, constantly torments your mental state as her invisibility forces some sort of paranoia. Is she here or is she not? And let's be honest, jungle tracking is the last thing that people simply just forget about, as they mostly take trades for the fun of it. I really wish I was joking, but that's sadly the reality of things. Next to those lost chapter power picks, we have another champion that has been a bit of a problem than before. This will be the case if you invested a significant amount of time into playing him. Rengar is one of those assassins that could take over the game and the map, and with the items being adjusted, this could turn into a pretty dangerous situation. As he wasn't really a Prowler's user, and more of a Duskblade or Eclipse enjoyer, he might like the newly changed Claw. But the real deal about this champion and his core identity is having Yumu's as your main mythic for now. The amount of lethality and overall damage provided by this item will cause some headache on the enemy team as your damage is about to skyrocket with just that item. If you pair that with first strike, the amount of burst is beyond reasonable belief and it just becomes a question if losing out on fleet is just too painful. For our mid lane, we're gonna have some same issues emerge. Lost chapter, lost chapter, and yeah, you guessed it, lost chapter. Champions such as Cassiopeia, Gragas, Twisted Fate, and even LeBlanc became so much more annoying now than even before. Nico can even find her place with some adjusted values on her ultimate's ability. But let's take a look at our list first. LeBlanc has always been one of those champions that are infamous for aggression and stylish gameplay. If you think about jungle champions that are viable and then add to the mix that LeBlanc provides a decent setup, you can go ahead and get free kills during the laning phase. I sound like a broken record, but if you enjoy mages or anything that builds Lost Chapter and likes Futures Market, well, you're in for a joyful ride. Next to this lovely champion, we're going to double down on aggression with Pantheon. Combining items such as Cliffs and Prowler's Claw will now grant you an immense amount of burst that turns enemies into sad little corpses rather fast. 
Adding Electrocute to that while facing a mage will provide you with so many sources of damage that your mind will be blown, as well as their HP bar. You can just send them with your shield and then basically send them straight into your Comet Spear, execute Threshold, and things won't look so nice as the game goes on. Not to mention that your potential rotations to other lanes will give you the upper hand in solo queue many, many times. Another interesting change for the mid lane and its power balance comes in the form of Jasana with an Infinity Edge Rush. Sounds flippy, yeah, but if you can crit, you could do so much damage. Add to the fact that other zeal items got buffed and they grant you such an absurd amount of AD, and you'll have a field day exploding people with their explosive charge. Oh, and also about your explosive charge. Many people still don't know that you can stack it with spells as well as auto attacks. That means your W and R can apply a stack to it and therefore accelerate the enemy's demise. Now, it's time for the real chaotic lane, the bot lane. We'll be starting with the ADCs and take a good look first and then let's dive right on into it. Varus is a clear winner of this patch and is running around killing everybody. Turns out giving a champion hybrid pen on an item that is on theme with his playstyle as well as his hybrid damage nature will push him over the edge. Also, him having access to an item that boosts his magical damage in the form of LDR as a new option is also opening up more build paths for this champion. Rageblade alone is already a massive carry for this champion, but being allowed to add more options later down the road just doesn't hurt his viability. Another cool idea comes in the form of Miss Fortune who can enjoy the new collector. With this little buff and the change of making Yumu's a mythic item, she now has access to a lot of lethality. Add to the fact that she can utilize first strike pretty well and isn't forced to invest into boots due to her strut. By taking magical footwear and using her W, she can save a lot of time on the map and be in plays or positions other ADCs usually cannot be. For this patch, you can think of MF as a one-hit wonder that if you walk too close to her, she will absolutely wreck you, which I'm sure some of y'all will be okay with. I know I would be. The next thing I want to talk about is the good old Ziggs in the bot lane. This champion is a master when it comes to stalling games and changing their pace into one that favors them. For me, personally, it's always funny to see how tiny or major adjustments can end up changing the ecosystem, especially in the bot lane. But this, there is just too much chaos and this meta will take a bit of time to develop properly. It's as if we just got a new season. The same thing also applies to the support role as we have some absurd changes taking place. Take a look first and see what has changed and expect much more happening as we go further into the patch. Hot fixes, changes, adjustments, everything is going to happen as Riot already put a few champions on their list of hot fix targets. But first, let's take a look at our support tier list. Tarek has been one of the most annoying supports of all time, especially with a combination of a specific combo that you usually saw being used by boosters. Tarek and Kindred. For this patch, however, we're diving into some options for this character that will surely be interesting to listen to. With Echoes of Helia becoming an item, it's an interesting option for Tarek to look into. If you are against a champion that can reliably auto attack, that is. The constant damage output in healing can be crazy, at least in theory, but other than that, he's happy about the support economy changes, and he really likes having his items a few waves earlier. For the enchanter players among you guys, we're going to be highlighting Sona. Be it Echoes of Helia or the Chain Item Moonstone, you name it, you get it. If you're not in danger of being murdered for just stepping up, Echoes of Helia will be a crazy amplifier for your overall usefulness in the game. Since you have low cooldowns, you can spam and utilize this item to its full potential. Next to that, having access to an item that changes your AoE healing ability just doesn't sound balanced at all. At least Sona has to suffer through her laning phase if the enemy knows what they're doing. On the other hand, if you want a strong laning phase, we gotta talk about one of our favorite pressure supports, it's Bard. Nobody really likes seeing this champion, be it on your team or the enemy's team. This champion just always triggers bad memories. Now he's able to either purchase the lovely new item Echoes of Hylia, or get his Radiant Virtue super early. Yes, it was nerfed, but having the effect and the item stats earlier is pretty neat. Meta-wise, we believe that utilizing Guardian or Font of Life with Echoes of Helia can make him quite the troublemaker. Magic damage dealers are already crying when they think about the new Abyssal Mask on him. That may sound like way too much to digest and he may be unsure on what to do about it, but don't sweat it. We got you covered. Everything you want is basically just one click away. Check out the description below and follow the steps as I mentioned earlier. You can gain access to our master classes and maybe find your mentor. Double lift, Aphromu, or General Sniper. From landing to vision control and advanced mechanics including how to itemize, we got it all and it's just $7.99 a month. And that about wraps up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you all in the next one and stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.